Hey there, crazy people. Welcome to the Madhouse. My name is Stacy. Did you know that some of your favorite fairy tales actually have dark and sinister endings? They don't all end well. Now, Disney has adapted these tales over time so all their movies can have a happy ending. That didn't sound right, but we're going on. You know what I mean. I mean, if Disney hadn't changed these endings, uh, no one would go to the movies. And if you were to read these actual fairy tales to your children for like bedtime stories, it would likely keep them up at night or give them nightmares. Now, the first story we're going to talk about is The Little Mermaid. Now, of course, Disney's version of Han Christian Andersen's tale of The Little Mermaid has a happier ending. Even through all the trials and tribulations that this evil witch, this evil sea witch tries to throw at him, Ariel eventually wins the heart of Prince Eric. She gets her voice back and she is married on a big boat, surrounded by her aquatic friends, her other friends, and family. But actually, Hans Christian Andersen's version of The Little Mermaid was pretty much tragic through the whole story. Ariel does make a deal with the sea witch, but her actual transformation to human is extremely painful and she's in agony throughout the story and then not only is she in physical pain but she eventually experiences heartbreak when prince eric falls in love with someone else and marries someone else but the sea witch has her claws into this also the sea witch tells ariel that if she kills Prince Eric, that she can become a mermaid again and live out the rest of her life. But Ariel is still in love with Prince Eric and chooses not to kill him. And so she throws herself into the sea and becomes sea foam. That's not a good ending. I'm going to try really hard to say a good ending, but not happy ending. That just doesn't sound right. But you know what I mean if I slip up and I say happy ending, right? Okay, as long as we're on the same page, we're okay. Now, I loved the Disney film of Mulan. I loved the music. I loved the sassiness of it. And I loved the fact that it felt like it was empowering girls to be heroes. Now, Mulan was actually based on the Ballad of Mulan. Now, Disney made it into where Mulan eventually saves the day and saves everyone. And they're all bowing to her at the end of the movie. And she goes home with honor and, and the fact that she hasn't actually disgraced her family like she thought she would. Now, we know that Mulan actually takes her father's place in the army. And that is true to the original story. Now, while she's in the army, she actually meets the king's daughter, who is also a warrior. Now, the two of them became inseparable. And when the king is defeated, the king is going to be put to death. And they both offer to take his place, to kill them instead of the king. They are eventually spared from this. And then Mulan eventually returns home and finds that her father has died while she's been gone. And her mother has already remarried. Now, during all of this, the same as in the movie, her female identity is revealed. The, in, in the original story, she's actually ordered to become a concubine because of the disgrace. And she commits suicide rather than submit to this fate. And I hate that she felt like this was her only option. And I know this story ends with suicide. And please, if you are in that space in your life that you feel like that's your only option, please call somebody. Please get help. There are people out there that care. Even though it doesn't feel like it at this moment, there are people that care. Now, let's 
get off my soapbox. Now this next story is about Snow White. Now Snow White and the Seven Doors was Disney's first animated feature film and of course it's a classic and it was released in 1937. This story pretty much stays along the lines of the actual fairy tale and this fairy tale actually appears in the Brothers Grimm collection of fairy tales. The story ends with the prince awakening Snow White and them getting married and living happily ever after. Now in the original story told by the Brothers Grimm, the evil queen sneaks into the wedding and attends the wedding and the prince recognizes her. Now when the prince catches her, he makes her wear red hot iron slippers and dance till she drops. It says drops, it doesn't say dies, but I think with red hot iron slippers you would probably want to die. I would. Now Cinderella is probably almost every little girl's favorite fairy tale. And in Disney's version of it, of course, it's got singing animals. It's got a beautiful girl. She has a fairy godmother. She gets to meet the prince and she lives happily ever after. And she doesn't have to deal with her stepmother or stepsisters ever again. Now in the Brothers Grimm version, Cinderella does get her happy ending, but there are some gorier aspects to the story. Like when the prince was taking around the shoe to all the single ladies, all the single ladies, for them to try on this shoe, the lengths that the stepsisters went to to try to fit in this shoe is kind of bizarre. One cut off a pinky toe and the other one cut off part of her heel trying to fit into this shoe. Now Cinderella actually does get with her prince and they do get married, but at the wedding, as wedding entertainment goes, Probably standard wedding entertainment. I don't know. But in the wedding entertainment of their wedding, her stepsisters have their eyes plucked out of their head by Cinderella's animal friends. I think it was pigeons. That's pretty dark. I don't know that I would want to hear that in a bedtime story told to me. But I am glad that everything turned out okay for Cinderella. The next story is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And this was, on Disney's version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, it still seemed like a darker, more evil side to the story than what Disney normally does. But I still loved the movie. Now, Disney's version of the movie... Quasimodo does save Esmeralda and he accepts that she loves another and he leaves the cathedral and he's welcomed in society as a hero. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is actually a tale written by Victor Hugo. Now in Victor Hugo's story, there is a much sadder ending. Quasimodo's guardian, the archdeacon, betrays Esmeralda and sends her to her death. When Esmeralda is hung, Quasimodo actually kills his guardian because his guardian is laughing while Esmeralda is being hung. And Quasimodo mourns Esmeralda terribly and actually stays at her grave site and eventually dies of starvation at her grave. He just loved her so much. I think kind of what I get from that story is that Quasimodo wasn't in a situation where he was taught how to love, but he was still capable of it. So is it nature over nurture? I don't know. Okay, now we're gonna talk about Sleeping Beauty. This gets very confusing. It's like, the whisper game. You whisper something in somebody's ear 
and then that person whispers to the next person and the next person by the time it gets all the way back around the whole story is completely different i kind of get the feeling that the whole sleeping beauty story is kind of like that here's what i mean by that sleeping beauty was actually included in uh the brothers grim collection of stories but the brothers grim based their story of Sleeping Fusion from a French author named Charles Perrault's. But Charles Perrault's version wasn't the first publicized version. The first published story of Sleeping Beauty was by, I'm going to butcher this, I am so sorry, Giambattista Basile. And his version takes a very dark turn. Now, in this version, the king is actually walking past the home of Sleeping Beauty, and her name is Talia. I guess he's taking his falcon out, and his falcon flies into the house. So, he goes into the home to retrieve the bird, and he comes across the unconscious woman. It says he gathered the first fruits of love, leaving her still unconscious but pregnant with twins because that was I guess just a normal thing if a lady was unconscious you could just love her and leave her I'm so glad that I didn't grow up knowing that version of Sleeping Beauty I like the version that Disney tells now the story of Pinocchio and Pinocchio coming a real boy always kind of confused me but okay it's a fairy tale it's make-believe now Disney's version had of course the blue fairies and had things like the boys turning into donkeys and Geppetto living in the belly of a well Carlo Collati actually wrote the original story in his story Pinocchio accidentally kills a talking cricket he falls asleep on the stove and he burns his feet off and then he is hung by an evil talking cat and fox while Geppetto lives on a ship inside the terrible dogfish I guess the ship's name was the terrible dogfish I'm not understanding that but he lives there for two whole years before he's actually rescued by Pinocchio it's all very confusing Basically, of course, the moral of this story is don't tell lies and don't run away from home. Do what your papa tells you. Next, we have our Rapunzel story. In Disney's movie, Rapunzel breaks out of her tower and gets to explore the world, and she gets into a lot of trouble along the way. But it all makes for a great movie, right? But in the original story, things don't go so well. The witch actually realizes that the prince is visiting Rapunzel. So, she cuts off Rapunzel's hair and sends her out into the wilderness on her own, somewhere that she's never been, never been out of the tower. And the witch actually waits in the tower and she's waiting for the prince to show up. And so when the prince visits again, the witch ties up Rapunzel's hair and throws it out the window like, like it's always been done. And he's actually climbing the tower on Rapunzel's cut off hair. When he gets to the top, the witch pushes him out, of course intending to kill him. But he doesn't die. He lands on bushes below and his eyes are torn by thorns and stuff from these bushes. So he's blinded. Even though he's blinded, he kind of wanders the wilderness and he's guided back to Rapunzel by listening to her beautiful singing voice and he is actually reunited with Rapunzel when the prince is reunited with Rapunzel she's so happy she cries tears of joy and the tears heal the prince's eyes and he's able to see again now, Rapunzel's story has a little twist. The prince had been visiting Rapunzel 
for quite a while. And apparently, there had been some naughty business going on. So when the witch cut off Rapunzel's hair and cast her into the wilderness, Rapunzel was pregnant and gave birth to twins. So when the prince and Rapunzel reunited, she actually had twin babies with her. And of course, the whole family, of course, lived happily ever after, but had a lot of sleepless nights with twins, I'm sure. But I'm wondering about these fairy tales. Why do they have to involve the naughty business? I don't want the naughty business in my fairy tales. I guess back then fairy tales just had to have naughty business. Um, this last one, I'm never, I'm not really going over the darker side of it. I'm not sure there is a darker side of it, but it's more like a theory, okay? This is about Peter Pan. And of course it is creepy that Peter Pan keeps kidnapping this darling family and takes them on journeys. Sounds very weird. Just my opinion though. But from a little extract from J.M. Barry's Peter Pan and Wendy, it makes me think things are weird. It says the boys on the island vary, of course, in numbers, according as they get killed and so on. And of course they get killed in these battles with the pirates. And when they seem to be growing up, which is against the rules, Peter thins them out. What does that mean? What is Peter doing with him to thin them out? Because I don't think he's putting them on a diet. So if you're growing up too fast, or at all for that matter, Peter will thin you out. Hence the ever-changing number of Lost Boys. Now I can remember reading something years ago about Peter Pan that actually said a theory, it was a theory, it was a whole theory, that Peter Pan's Lost Boys, when they became older, actually became Captain Hook's pirates. It makes sense because where did these growing up boys go? Where do they go? Because they're not going to say in a fairy tale that they killed them because they were getting older. And maybe that's not what's happening at all. They're just turning into Captain Hook's pirates. That's a better thought than thinking of them being thinned out. Because that makes me think like they're being executed. I don't know. What do you think? Am I the only one that thinks this way? Anyway, I'm sure that all these tales even in their original form, were meant to have some sort of moral to the story or some sort of teaching lesson for children. But some of them, in some ways, I just don't feel were child appropriate. And I wonder if it goes back to, you hear back in the old days that children were meant to be seen and not heard. So maybe the writers of these fairy tales really weren't around children that much. So they really didn't know what was appropriate for children. And then they had these stories had to be adapted to make for entertainment in our culture. I, for one, am extremely grateful that Disney has animated these stories and made them with such happy endings. So... Y'all let me know, have I ruined some of these fairy tales for you now? Or do you just choose not to think about the darker side of it and just go with Disney's version of the stories? Let me know. And thanks for joining me. I'll catch you next time. Bye.